Hello everyone, thank you for joining us in this lesson. Today we are going to learn how to set up an advanced Rust development environment. We will install few VS Code extensions. Starting with the Rust Analyzer, this extension will help you during development and testing. The second extension we install will help you format your cargo.toml and make it a little bit more readable and intuitive. And the final extension, which is a bit more advanced, is debugging your programs, putting breakpoints, inspecting variables and functions, and following code paths. We'll look at how each extension works and how to use it properly, and also we'll learn how to be a little bit more productive using the Rust tooling ecosystem. I highly recommend that you watch my previous video where we set up a minimalist Rust environment. We also learned how to install Rust and how to install VS Code. I would say if you're not familiar with these two, that video is uh, fundamental. So I'm going to put a link to it here and feel free to watch it. Okay, let's get started. Hopefully, if you followed my previous lesson, you will already have VS Code installed. Now, without further ado, the first extension that we'd like to install here is the Rust Analyzer. This is a really important extension. Anyone developing Rust would have this extension installed. Now, you might have heard of the RLS, which is the original Rust language server. Well, the Rust Analyzer, I would say, probably supersedes, if not completely replaced, is RLS. It's essentially an IDE backend that will enable code completion, error correction as soon as you save your document. So essentially you do not have to recompile the files yourself every single time. The Rust Analyzer will do that for you in the backend. In order for us to install it, we'll go on the left hand side here and click on these four squares. You hover over it, it will say extensions and let's look up Rust Analyzer. So as you can see here, the Rust Analyzer is the second one. Let's click on it. Let's take a moment and read what's on this page. This is extremely important. The first thing I usually do is go to the repository of the extension itself, just to see how many issues are open, when it was last updated. This is all important. And I'll explain, we have another extension coming up in a minute, and I'll explain the reason why this is important. Okay, so once you click install, it'll take a few moments. It's now installed. Let me click on repository here just to show you the things that I look for when I look at extensions. This is the Rust Analyzer GitHub page. First thing I look at is the number of stars, when it was last updated. So I can see here the last commit was a couple of hours ago. The number of issues, there's quite a lot of issues. Uh, of course, you know, the, the entire Rust community uh, is using Rust Analyzer. Some of them are still using RLS, but a significant uh, number of the Rust community are using the Rust Analyzer, hence the number of issues. So this is a very active project. It's extremely healthy as far as I'm concerned, and I'm happy with this extension. Let me come back to VS Code here, and let's demonstrate what the Rust Analyzer can do for you. I have created the basic Rust project here. If you're interested to know how I did that, please do watch my other videos where I go into details on how to use cargo and how to write basic Rust programs. Let me just open this project, click on SRC, click on main. This is the default Hello World program that you get when you use cargo. As you can see, because of the Rust Analyzer extension is already installed, and you can see here when I hover, I do have the Rust Analyzer waiting and loaded already in my workspace. The Rust Analyzer provides you with two functions from the outset. You have a run and a debug here. So if I wanted to run this program, traditionally without the Rust Analyzer, I would have to go to the terminal and go something along these lines, cargo run, and it will run it for me. But with the Rust Analyzer, if I click on run, it'll automatically run it for me without me having to open the actual terminal. Let's see what else we can do with the Rust Analyzer. Let's say if I had a variable, I'll call it hello world. And I'll just write the portion of that sentence here. I'll take this off and I'll do this. As soon as I click save, if you observe what's happening at the bottom of the screen here where it says Rust Analyzer, so I'm going to save it, Control S, 
There you go. So it's super quick. You probably haven't even noticed it started working. And it already detected a couple of things for us. Let's start with line two and see what it found. So what it's saying here is that this variable does not correspond to the best practice of naming variables in Rust. It should have a snake case. So let's change that. If I click on the error, you see this orange light bulb here is essentially a way to fix things that are highlighted as an error or a warning. So in this case, it is a warning. Let's change that to hello world. And also there is an error in here. So if I hover on these curly braces, it says one position argument in form a string, but no argument were given. Again, I haven't even compiled this. All I did is save and it's already detected one warning and one error. And of course, this error is because I do not have this positional argument called hello underscore word. So if I do that, and as soon as I save, you'll see the warning and the error disappearing. There you go. And then I click on run and it run it successfully with a hello world printed on the screen. So the Rust analyzer, of course, does a lot more than this. So if I had a function that I wanted to see the definitions for, I could just hover here and it will tell me what the actual function does. If I want to see the implementation in addition to the documentation here, I just click on F12. And that will take me directly to the println definition. And the second extension that I'd like to install deals with the cargo.toml file. So if I click on cargo here, as you can see, this is the toml file type. VS Code out of the box does not know how to handle toml. So we need an extension. And the way to install that, you go on the left hand side and in the extension search box, just type in toml. Now you will see quite a few. There is better toml and there is quite few others. It's very important to have up to date extensions. So better toml is the extension that comes up first. And as you can see here, quite a few people have installed it. It does not have a lot of good reviews. And if I click on the repository itself, you can see that the last update was almost two years ago. Since then, there were different versions of Tomal updated and uh, yeah so I, I don't feel comfortable with this extension instead what we'll do we'll look at a different one maybe even better Tomal or if I look at this one here it seems a little bit more up to date it's at version one already it has a few good reviews and it's more recently updated as well so this is the one we are going to install click on install. That's pretty much it. It was very quick. It installed it. And then if I go back to my project tree and I click on cargo and you will see suddenly it is a little bit more colorful and a little bit more easy on the eyes as well. The last extension that I'd like to talk about is debugging. Now, if you're coming from Java or C Sharp or C++, you'd know that putting breakpoints at certain areas of the code is extremely important. Well, we can do the same thing with Rust using the debug extension. So if I go to my extension search box here and I just click on debugger, you will see quite a lot and they all serve different purposes, right? But there is one really cool extension called code LL. DB. This is a brilliant extension that allows you to debug native programs, whether, you know, be it written in C++ or Go or Rust, it doesn't really matter, right? It's, it's going to debug all your x86 or ARM programs, including binaries for Windows and Linux and Mac as well. Let's click on install. This is a very advanced topic, so I'm not going to dwell too much on it, but let's install this extension and I'll demonstrate it real quick. So that's installed right now. I'll go back to my main.rs and I will put a breakpoint in here and then watch what happens when I click on run and start debug. It's going to prompt me for configuration file. You can see here the error says cannot start debugging because no launch configuration has been provided. It's going to create one for me out of the box. I'll quickly type in the path to my binary. and you save it. Then you come back to the main.rs file 
and click on run start debugging because i've put breakpoint at line three the program will stop and you can actually explore and inspect the uh, stack and all the variables so if i hover here for example it will tell me that this is a string and this is what it contains so yeah again this is an advanced topic but if you are familiar with debugging then you will definitely recognize the step over step into and step out uh, of the code so for example if i wanted to see what's happening with the println function i can just step into it and in this case of course it will show me uh, an entirely different piece of program this is a, this assembly here with on the left hand side the local variables uh, the globals and the registers yeah th this is really useful when you are working with highly complex programs okay this is it for this lesson we've looked at these three extensions i find them personally extremely useful i also use many more other extensions for more advanced tasks like remote development integrating containers there is a plethora of extension that you can choose from but i truly believe if you are serious about trust then the bare minimum that you can install is these three extensions you'll be a little bit more productive more effective in your rust development okay thank you and i will see you in the next lesson